With movement out of the way, the next thing you are probably curious about is animating. Networking animations is another very easy thing to accomplish with fish networking. To save time, I have already made some animations. I'll demonstrate them, and if you wish to take time to make your own, feel pleased to do so after I show my changes. I also want to point out that I removed the mesh components from my player's root. You don't have to do this, but I prefer keeping visuals as a child of the parent. I moved all those to a new capsule object beneath the parent, and that's the object I will animate. I also added the animator component, which is the one that comes with Unity, set a controller that I just made, and of course made the animations, which I will demonstrate now. The first animation I have is a jump animation. You can see it's just a very quick up and down. And then I have the idle animation, which is literally nothing. It just sits there in place. And then I have the move, which will make the capsule waddle. Like before, let's first set up our animations for offline. To begin, I will make a new script called animating. This script will also use network values. So like before, I will change model behavior to network behavior and add the using fishnet object. Since I'm working with the animator, I'm going to get a reference of it as well. And I'm going to call it underscore animator. And then like before, I'll just set that in awake. Now I'm going to get rid of these two methods and then I'm going to do public void set moving. I'm going to do bool value. And then I'm going to make another one, public void jump. Now under set moving, I'm going to do animator dot set boolean moving, and I'm going to set it to value. And then for the jump, I'm just going to do animator dot set trigger passing in jump. And just to show you in my animation controller, I do have the jump trigger and the moving boolean. When the jump trigger is set, jump will be called and then I'll go over to idle. And if you switch between moving or not moving, these will bounce between each other. Admittedly, this is not a very good animation controller, but I just want something very simple and quickly set up. These two methods here will control the moving and jump parameters that you just saw. Now we need to know when to activate these. I opened up the script from the last video called moving. And at the very bottom of this update method, I'm going to do a very quick check. I'll do bool is moving equals horizontal doesn't equal zero F or vertical doesn't equal zero F. Essentially, if there's input, then you're moving. Now I'm going to check for the jump as well. So I'll do if input dot get key down key code dot space, then I need to call the jump method here, but I can't do that because I don't have a reference to it yet. At the very top, I'm going to do private animating underscore animating, getting a reference to the animation script we just made. And then I'm going to, of course, sign that reference to what is on the object. Now I'm going to go below my bool is moving and do animating dot set moving to is moving. And then in the input space where I check if space bar is pressed, I'm going to call animating dot jump. And I think I'm going to actually just rename this to moving instead of is moving. I do tend to use the is prefix for fields, but not so much for local variables because I like them shorter. Let's go back to the project. I need to add that animating script to my character. So I'm just going to type in animating, add it on, and then save the prefab and then remove that from my scene. I noticed entering play mode was a little slow. I opened up my project settings, went to the editor, and enabled enter play mode options while keeping the reload options unchecked. Now let's go check out our animations. Entering play mode, starting the client and server, moving around, I can see the object is waddling about, and it stops waddling when I let go of input, and if I press space, it jumps as expected. Going to the code again real quick, you'll notice that in these methods, they don't check for ownership. I said while making this class, we'd be using network values, but in the middle of it all, I changed my design plan to not require them. There's no harm in leaving this as a network behavior, but I'm going to change it back for clarity. So I'm just gonna change it back to model behavior. With that said, the reason we don't have to check if we are the owner before changing the animations is because they are done in the moving script, or rather the moving script makes calls to the animating script, but it only does that after checking is owner. So it'd be kind of redundant to do it twice. I'm going to go to the player prefab and then I'm going to add the network animator component. This is just like it sounds, kind of like the network transform, instead of networking the transform properties, it will network the animation properties. You'll notice that it will automatically find my animator as I attach it, but if not, go ahead and drop your animator in there and leave everything to default settings. I have two builds up and the editor as server once again, and I'm going to move the client on the left and you can see that the animations are synchronizing over the network and just as if I move them on the right. Now there is a slight gotcha when using the network animator and it's very small. And you're gonna notice that when I do the jump animation on the right, it's not synchronizing to the left. We just have to make a really quick small change for that. I'm going to go back to the script here under animating and we're going to need a reference to the network animator. So I'm gonna do private 
network animator. This isn't going to be found right away. So you have to add the using fishnet component animating and I'm going to call it underscore network animator. And like before, I'm just going to get that and awake. To make triggers work over the network, you have to switch from calling them on the animator and actually call them on the network animator. So I'm just going to do network animator dot set trigger jump. And you can absolutely pass in hashes instead of strings if you like. The reason we have to do this is because triggers are often set and unset in the same frame. When this occurs, a network animator may not notice a trigger. As a solution, you set the trigger through network animator. There are also other methods such as network animator dot play, play in fixed time, crossfade, etc. While the network animator could detect these changes automatically is significantly more performant to simply tell it that they are happening. Primitive types however may be set directly on the animator such as booleans, floats, integers. I went back to the editor, started it as server, and then made two builds again. Now you can see when I move around and jump that it synchronizes over the network. If you'd like to know more about the network animator component, check out the video for it.